Hey you, yeah you, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel Barrel Up Podcast. Follow us on Instagram, Barrel Up underscore Baseball. Follow us on Twitter, Barrel Up Podcast slash Baseball. Like this video, comment down below. You see this bar right here that's a subscribe button? Yeah, click that. And most importantly, don't forget to turn on your notification bell. So that bell. Tenemos un gran contenido con un pilar de béisbol, Domingo Leiva, segunda base de las grandes ligas de Arizona Diamondbacks. Mi hermano, ¿cómo te sientes? Tranquilo, manito, hasta allá. Carol Love Podcast was here. Es mi compañero Carol. Este, bienvenido a Carol Love Podcast. Gracias por. Carol Love Podcast was here. Mi hermano Willy Adames. Que lo que, bro, de que lo que. Brando Cruz B. Cruz in the building, you already know. Already. Guy's been in my but he's back. Prodigal son has returned. He's returned. And I got my boy D. Polanco, Daryl Polanco. The Guru back on, the trio is back. Yes, Happy sir. New Year with my guys here. This is Barrel of Podcast. Welcome, guys. And thank you for tuning in. Thank you for the loyalty. Thank you for the comments, the subscriptions. We're at, if I can't get this correct or wrong, 696 right now. 696 subscribers. And it's all thanks to you guys. Um, we're almost at our 1,000 mark. We're almost there, so keep on subscribing. Share this content. And today we have exciting, exciting, exciting news. MLB is on the move. MLB players are on the move. MLB signings, both domestically and internationally, are going on. And we're going to break those down today. Let's go with the good signings, though. Let's start with the good news, right? Uh, Michael Brantley, Michael Brantley signs with the Toronto Blue Jays. Eh, no, he does not. That deal was scratched. Michael Brantley actually signs with... The Houston Astros, he doesn't want to leave the cheating, hash, the cheating Astros, right? He doesn't want to leave that team. He signs for an extension of two years, $32 million. Let's break that down. I think the most honest guy, the most honest hitter there uh, during the cheating era, 2017 to 2019, was Michael Brantley. Mm -hmm. If you look at his numbers throughout the major league career that he's had, he's been like a 290, a 290 hitter all consistent. his career, consistent. Very consistent. And he did that with the Astros. So even with the Astros, when the Astros was, were flunking, the other day, yes, he was. He was. He was on the team. He was on the team. Twenty seventeen. No. No. Twenty eighteen. He was hurt. He was there. Twenty nineteen and twenty twenty. Well, he was there in the midst of their. Um, what's it called? No, I don't think so. Bro. Wasn't he there in twenty eighteen? I was with Cleveland. He was hurt actually in twenty eighteen. He was hurt. He played some type of with games the with the like Houston Astros. Astros. But the most consistent hitters for the Astros right there. He gets signed again. Congrats to him on his contract. He's a very, uh, very big veteran without the, within the game of baseball. He's been around for a while. Yes. Remember his days in Cleveland as a, as a prospect. And now he's getting, you know, a contract that he deserves as a late brewer in the game. Uh, guys, your thoughts on that move? Should he have signed with Toronto or Houston? What's going on? What's going on, bro? Um... There was um, speculation that he was going to follow George Springer into signing with Toronto because they were very close friends and they are um, managed and represented by the same um, agency. Comp, same agency. And so therefore, Toronto is going to get pretty much a two two for one in, in, one se in, in a sense. But uh, Daryl, I don't know what happened. So do you have any info on what could have happened? Or what I mean, happened? I believe they offered him that contract, that three-year deal. I think somebody jumped the gun. And said that he agreed to it, but it turns out that it was just negotiations. What was the three-year deal that Toronto had panned out for for Brantley? Well, the monetary value of that deal didn't really come to light yet. Um, it was supposedly a principal agreement on a three-year on a three-year deal. Okay. Um, it was supposed to pay him handsomely, like around fourteen, fifteen million a year. Okay. Um, but obviously it didn't work. He went back to Houston. He got the caught wind of that deal. It was like, listen, we got to bring this guy back. So two years, thirty-two million, paying him a nice sixteen, seventeen million a year. They got their man back. A very, very valuable bat. A very, very good player in the clubhouse. 
props to him. You know, if it would have been on Toronto that he would have signed with Toronto, then that team would have been more stacked than what it is right now offensively. And I'll tell you why. Uh, the Toronto Blue Jays, they just signed what everybody thought was going to be uh, a trade for the, well, not a signing for the Mets, for the New York Mets. For all the rumors were pointing that direction. New York, New York, New York, New York. Turns out it points that direction, all the way north to the six, just like Drake says. Six, 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 yeah. George Springer also signs a big contract. He signs a six-year, $153 million contract with the Toronto Blue Jays. Money bags. That's what's what going on there at this point in his career. Did he get what his what he deserves, or was it a good? Or I, I think it's a good sign. What do you guys think? I honestly think he um he wasn't worth. He's not worth all that money. Maybe he'll he'll prove us all wrong. He is thirty one, I believe. Um, going into his thirty two year old season, contract's over. At, he's gonna be thirty eight, and I honestly believe his best years are behind him. He's probably gonna give him two or three years of. Uh, Top-notch all-star, um, all-star producing um, talent. All predictions. Um, but after that, I don't like I said. Maybe that's why he didn't sign with the Mets. The Mets could they couldn't see eye to eye him and his management team. So, I mean, I wish him the best. Toronto has young talent, so they needed a veteran presence. So he's he has experience in the playoffs. But I don't think he's worth the money. You don't think he's worth twenty-five point five million dollars? A year for the next six years. No, I said that if it, if I was in a GMC, I would have signed them for maybe four years at a hundred. Okay. Four years, you get good four years out of him, hundred million. It's a good you contract, know, yeah. But I guess he wanted a little more security. Daryl, your take on this big, big deal that Toronto takes on the responsibility of a player like George Springer, very, very good player, we would say. Six years in Toronto as a center fielder for Toronto. I have to agree with Brando in terms of the length mm. of the contract. Okay. Six years is a little bit too much. How old is he? How old is he? He's about to be 32. Okay. So he's going to retire. After six years, he's going to be like 40, 41. And honestly, I, I give him about two, three more years at center field until he gets moved to the corner. In terms of hitting, I think he's going to be that same hitter, that same consistent clutch hitter. Um, it's just that six years, 153, a team like Toronto didn't really need somebody like Spring on the team. But... Toronto's ready to spend. They have a very rich owner. Yes. And they were looking for that big fish because Toronto's really not known for signing big free agents. Their correct. last big contract was Vernon Wells like 10 years ago. Correct, correct. Vernon well, 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 they had given $60 million to Jose Bautista a couple years back. But that was, was a, a, a extension. Yeah, extension. Yeah, extension. Yeah. Those are short-term contracts, but yeah. um, by the, they were fishing for a big fish. And they what got did, it, which was... What something. did Ryu get? Ryu, he was... I think he got a three-year deal. Three-year deal. So they're minimizing the years. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that, you know, I wouldn't have given him that much money. I don't know about the years. Maybe I would have done a five-year deal for To me, the problem, is, minutes, the, the problem is the years. Minutes. The money, yeah. I mean, he's an elite center fielder, mm -hmm. and he's an elite hitter. So that's yeah. 25, you know, it garners it again. You know, I like the combination of that they're going to pan out this year. The possible uh, starting outfield. You know, you got Gritchick in left, you got Springer in right, and Teroscar Hernandez in right. You know, that's going to be something. So Springer in center, Teoscar Hernandez in left or right, or Gritchick in the corners, you know? Or that's Gurriel. It. Or Gurriel. They have Gurriel as well. Yes. Something very spiceful is going to happen in that outfield, and they can all hit. So <coughs> it's on the plus, I would say. Um, I like Toronto going into this year. I Like we talked off camera, um... I believe they, they can make the playoffs, which they did last year, and also because the expand expanding um, postseason teams mm -hmm. to eight. So there will be a playoff team for sure, but I don't see them getting deep into the playoffs because your offense can only carry you so far in the postseason. We all know that. You do need pitching and defense. Um, so, I mean, maybe they can get some more pitchers. Hey. You never know, and Toronto could be a good team for um, numerous years coming. Don't throw out the idea that they go for a top free agent like Trevor Bauer, you know, to solidify another spot in that in that rotation. Just just a thought, you know. There's still some free agents out there that we'll talk about later in the show. But before we get into that, we're going to talk about a big three-team trade that went down in the last uh, week, days. the last week of baseball yes. of this off season, and I'm going to let you guys speak on it more than I. I, Joe, I know it was a three-team trade. Joe Lucchesi. 
was involved to the Mets. What ha well, what else happened? I didn't get the whole scope of it, but I know the Mets, Padres, and the Pirates. The Pirates were involved. Involved, yes. So break that down to me. What's going on, guys? Um, as you mentioned, Joe Lucchesi, I Lucchesi, think, yeah, Jesse, yeah. yeah. Um, he ended up going to the Mets. He's a lefty reliever. Had a pretty good season in a short season last year. Um, also can spot start here and there. Um, um, the Pirates gave up Joe Musgrove to the Padres, so the Padres needed a fifth starter because Clevenger is not may not be back next year. I believe Darrell, or he might be back. No, he has Tommy John. He's yeah, be so he's out. So they needed another starter, and um, Joe Musgrove is on an up and up. He he eats innings, as you said. Um, he's a good good fifth starter, back of the end rotation guy. Um, the Pirates actually they're in a rebuilding stage, so they just wanted prospects. Uh, I think the Mets gave up a guy named Eni Rodriguez. He was up in the Mets organization, very um, yeah, talented, very talented player. A lot of uh, a lot of upside on in his part. So um, to me, the Padres just got better, honestly. And the Mets, they everybody met their needs. The Padres needed a back end rotation guy. The Pirates got their um, prospects for the future, and the Mets got a lefty earlier, which is who they needed. The Mets are solidifying that bullpen, man. It's looking really good. As we say every year, but <laughs> I think this year's might be. It might be. Uh, I, I don't know. With, good. The, news, with the news I got to say later on, I don't know. Anyway, uh, Daryl? I mean, it's a big big trade. Uh, the Padres out here making statement after statement after statement. After statement, again, let's, let's talk about that. AJ Perlin, one of my favorite GMs, making moves as always. Um, he did get Joe Musgrove. I love Joe Musgrove. Um, he's a great pitcher. He's not really known as a razzle-dazzle, strike you out, or yeah. run for Cy Young. Correct. But he's that consistent guy that will be out there every fifth day, giving <clears> him <throat> seven plus innings. He's a he's a he's a work work horse. He's, he eats up innings and Angel. he's consistent. He's consistent, right? Well, let's see. You know, apart from this, the Mets are also in talks with. Uh, Sonny Gray and other yes. another player Juarez Suarez um, Suarez Suarez and Daniel Suarez at their baseman the Mets are in talks with the Reds that would be a great move for the Mets my um, guy if but, they do that. but what would they give up I, I think they would have to give up at least J D Davis in that combo J D and J D and a Nimmo I think I don't think the Mets are in a position to be trading anybody away um, Steve Cohen came in and he's seen the organization the organization needs more players actually I wouldn't I would. I would counter that, and I would get rid of Mats, bro. You I would get rid of would get much for him. I would get what I'm go aiming for right now, Sonny Gray, and then I'll throw in somebody else for a package hitter like, like Juarez, that can, that Suarez, sorry, that can play third base and second. Only that will be the show, bro. <laughs> no, the guy. Listen, his, his mm, power numbers. Deals like that, though. Power numbers have been up the past crazy, two years. Crazy numbers. Cincinnati. Listen, see what I just started. Cincinnati's on the on the. I feel like they're also gonna rebuild because Joey Bottles, his his career is done. Who you got? Ah, not yet. Listen, Listen, Joey Bottle has a solid sorry. rotation. First of all, they made the playoffs last Luis year. Luis Castillo is not going to the Yankees. Relax. Relax. Yankees. No, he's not going to the I Yankees. I said it here first. That was a report. That was he's a report. going report. to the Yankees. Uh, here's the thing. He will be going to the Yankees. Right. He's saying no, but watch. Watch. He's not going to the Yankees. All he right. might be all going. Right, to right, the, right. The, the news that broke out the other day was totally false. Okay. In that trash ass division. Which trash ass division? The NL, the and NL Central. That Charlie Bauer wants to leave. I think the Reds. This is the trash ass division. Uh, they, Cubs. They just had three teams go to the playoffs. Cubs about to gut their whole team. They just they had are. three teams go to the playoffs. The Brewers are stagnant. They don't do much. Playoff back, back to back. The Pirates season. just traded away. Probably like their only solid. The Pirates are the Pirates. They're whatever. Okay. The Reds are probably the most dominant team. Um, Josh Bell went to the Nationals. Nationals. That's crazy. Josh That's Bell. crazy. More players players than why would they give up? Why would they give up Josh Bell, their cornerstone guy? But here's the thing. Like he said, the Pirates. At the Pirates. What are you doing? So they're trying to rebuild. But he is a prospect. Clear house. He's young. No, he's a stab. He's an all-star. Yeah, he's an all-star. Yeah, but he's young. Correct. He's like 27, 26. A team like the Reds who's ready to, who's been in the playoffs, who went to the playoffs last year, pretty much ready to compete. Why would you trade away top pieces to? Rebuild. They don't need to rebuild. What they need to do is keep adding. That's crazy. Because if there's one team coming out of the NL Central next year, it's definitely the Reds. Okay. Cook that on. Okay. Yes. They they need to lock in, lock up uh, Castellanos. That's what they need to do. Lock oh, up. I'm sorry. They got this Castellanos and Mike Mustakas. Mike Mustakas. They can let go of, of of Suarez and for Steven Mustakas. Matz. I'm good off that. Steven Matz has Steven Matz. been given the opportunity of a lifetime, the Golden Boy of New York, and he hasn't. Freaking done, Jack. Golden boy. Yes, 
He's been he's been treated like La Nina, bro. He's been treated. Yeah, they, the Mets have what? The Mets They've have given had... that guy like seven years to prove himself. Every year he's injured, or he, he gives you five innings one day, four innings the next, two good games, the rest seven games. He's total fucking garbage. Steven Mass is not getting you no Eugenio Suarez. I'm telling you that off for it. Listen. Steven Mass will get you a couple Listen. prospects. Listen. At most. Brandon Nimmo, JD Davis. They're talking. They're in the talks. They're not, they know they're gonna give up. Here's the Brandon thing. Nimmo, JD Davis. We'll throw in Steven Matz. Okay, so when you, you, you get, when you I get, say that? I don't know get, about getting rid of Nemo. And you get a Henry Suarez in return, so who are you going to put in right field? Who are you going to put in left field? Comforters are right. Mm. We got Dominic Smith from left. We're talking to Jackie Bradley. We're talking to Jackie Bradley Jr. Design, design, who, who, I'm talking about players definitive, on the team definitive, now. Definitive. Players on the team now. Because it's not a team we don't got friend anymore. Anyway. Conforto can always play center field. Nah, see, Cespedes is, is still there. We're talking team? about trades. We're huh. talking about the offseason, guys. Stay tuned. Listen, nah, one of them away from spring training, and yes. we don't know what the hell is going to happen. Yes, a lot of He's got his heads off here. Bam, bam, bam. A lot going on, but on another note, and I brought this up mm. for you guys. What? Are the Padres the best team in the National League now that they have the rotation? What is their rotation looking like? You got you, uh, you got you, Blake you Darvish. You got, now. You got Blake Holy Snell, crap. break, Blake, you Darvish. break, break the ball, Snell. All right, we Den- got Denison Lamet, Lamet, you Darvish, Blake Snell, Lamet, Joe Musgrove, Joe Musgrove, Chris Paddock, Chris Paddock, Chris Paddock, Chris Paddock is is a hey, Chris Paddock. I would. Mm. What do you want? By the way, I did not name the starting five. Listen, fighters. in not order, yeah. this year. and the but, best pitcher prospect. In baseball, Mackenzie Gore probably gonna get a spot on that team. Hold on, but they Mackenzie Gore didn't they get somebody? Didn't they, they did get, get rid of else? Kirby Yates. They, they're, they're, their bullpen is a little depleted, but we um they got the Japanese the Japanese they got board, a, a Japanese ja- pitcher. Correct. No, no, no. he's a second baseman. Second, second baseman. Sorry. And he said he wants to be rookie of the year, so he has talent. There's a lot of upside in San Diego. I'm a Mets fan, but I'm right now, right now, January the twentieth. They are the best team in the National League. Maybe the best team in baseball right now. Yeah, bugging. They don't right stack up against the Dodgers. Yes, they do. Three players yes, that have three guys ready to replace them. Listen, exactly. listen. For me, it's all about pitching, bro. It's all about pitching. Their um, their left side of the infield is the best in baseball. It is the best in baseball. It Machado and Tatis. There's no. There's you, there, you ball's get, not gonna get through there. There's no. There's nobody on the left side of the infield that. And it's that smooth and that um, effective. Hell no. You're, you're right. Will Myers is coming back. Healthy. I like Will Myers. Very consistent hitter. He's a little, his glove is a little, ah, but we'll be all right. I think um, I, I think he would have been a way better hitter with the Red Sox, Red Sox farm system. I, I don't know why you guys let go, well, we let go of, of Will Myers. Will Myers would have fit great in what the Red Sox are trying to do right now. Anyway, I just think that they're the best team. That's that's just me. And then know, guys, East, you guys say no. And NL period. No, and the NL West. Sorry. National League West. period. Period. And the National League, I no. think the Dodgers are still the best the, team. The Dodgers are still the best team. I'll tell you why. The Dodgers are on the brink of signing. I'll give it up to you, Darrell. I think they're going to go for a, a top name like um, Bauer in this uh, race right now. Tight race with a few big names to I was reading right now, as a matter of fact, um, it's either they're saying most MLB writers are saying either Dodgers or the Blue Jays that Bauer's going to go to, and I believe Bauer wants to win, <clears throat> and he's on a team that just won a championship, and I feel like you're Cy Young, you're going to World Series team, I think he's going to end up going to um, the Dodgers, and then, yeah. And the biggest motivator for Trevor Bauer is that $40 million a year, that coveted $40 million a year. God damn. And I think the only team that can do that is LA Dodgers. Hmm. And to be honest... We're talking about... Go ahead. Yeah, that's it. I think... I think I won't even watch baseball. We're talking about a lot of positive news, a lot of positive signings, right? And we're we're going to talk about another positive signing where a lot of fans wanted this to happen. Woo, yay! LeMahieu's back in New York. Fuck the Yankees. Anyway, (laughs) LeMahieu's back in New York, you know? But by far, they low-balled my guy. This is one of the, not bad and worse, but this is one of the most disappointing contracts I've seen in a while. I was very disappointed. Not so, that he went back to the Yankees, because I knew that was going to happen. Yeah, that was going to happen. But it's just the amount that he went back to. Yes. Bro, he's a, a guy that's proven himself, like I'm going to keep on saying it, and you guys are going to get tired of me saying it. A guy that's proven himself as a hitter, both in the National League 
and in the American League, winning, Western in baseball right now, winning batting titles in both leagues, and you're gonna lowball him. What was his contract? I don't want to say. He signed for fifty million a year. What the? Yeah, six fuck years, was, ninety million. What the? That's six pretty, years. What? 90 six million? years, ninety million. George, what was he asking for? George Springer just got six years, one hundred and fifty-three. You think George Springer is, and George a, is Springer a better hitter? George Springer is not even you crazy? top ten hitter in the majors. You and crazy? This guy got fifty million a year. Nah. Pretty much, the Yankees just pretty much got a gem for. For nothing, like literally. for the second time, because the first contract they gave him was still a, it was a steal. That's crazy. That's crazy. They locked up the guy. How many years? Six. Six. That's it. He's a Yankee. That's it. Uh, yeah, because he's 32, 32 years old. Six years. He's be thirty eight. He'll die a Yankee, maybe. Not die a Yankee. He'll retire a Yankee, and hopefully he does. Because he look, he looks good in pinstripes, and he's producing for that team. You know, and he can play first base. We saw that last year. I've been year. saying it for so uh, he, he he can play till maybe forty, maybe resign again. I've been saying it for three episodes. Three episodes of Barrel Up is at least three hours, uh, an hour each. Three hours, right? Sign the man. Sign the man. Sign the man. They got him. They, they said, "Are you sign here or you get out of my face?" And well, if he got out of their face, then any team would have gotten him in his face. And said what would have said, yo, sign here. That too. just shows that he wanted to be a Yankee. Yeah, he wanted the Blue Jays offered him a four-year deal for about seventy-two million, so he was making a little bit more than fifteen mil. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, he wanted to go back to the Yankees. He didn't, I guess it's not about the money for him. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely not. All right. So you know that was a uh, low ball, low ball trade. Well, not trade though. Signing, signing, right? Uh, on the other hand, let's go back to some positive. The Yankees signed a veteran, Kluber. Corey Kluber, former Cy Young. Corey Kluber, former Indian or new, uh, sorry, Cleveland blank. We don't know what the name of the team will be. They're no longer the Indians. They're going to change the logo. Former Cleveland prospect, not prospect, uh, pitcher. Pitcher, you know, won a Cy Young, got traded to Cleveland. I mean, I'm sorry, to Texas. And then free agent, signs with the Yankees. My uh, question is this. Why do both New York teams splurge on the fact that they always sign players like this and later in their careers. Why? Why? If you could have got this guy before he went to Texas and he could have been a definitive piece in your rotation. Well, he, did, he, he needed injured. a Kluber. He did get injured, but after he got injured, he did great, you know? And he hasn't played in two years. Kluber? Yeah. Yeah. He didn't pitch. He pitched one inning last year. Yeah, he did. He did. He got hurt. You're right. I mean, the Yankees took a chance, obviously. Um, but I, why are you taking I this chance like, like that? I feel like they, they, took a ch they took a chance, and it's an upgrade <sighs> because J.A. Happ um, left to Minnesota, signed with Minnesota. So I feel like if you're going to replace a piece with another piece, that is a good piece. It's Kruber. He's a right-handed pitcher, pretty good, uh, eats innings also when healthy. So I feel like it's an upgrade. they probably seen it in, in that way for me. So I, I'm okay with that signing. I'm not a Yankee fan. But I'll, I'll take the guy. If he can return to his Cy Young form, that's a steal for when you do. If I'll, he does not, it, even, not even. I'll yeah. take like 85% of that. Why did the Yankees focus their efforts and their money and their talent to scouts that they have in that organization for a player like Bauer? Oh, yeah. No, they can't have Bauer and Cole together. Arch nemesis. Sorry. Forget it. Bing, 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 bing. You guys know they're arch nemesis, right? Yes, they went they to school together. They, together, each they other. hate each other. Yes. Because one was the number one and one was the number two starter of that team. And they both said, no, I'm the number one. I'll, I'll, I'll do better than you. No, 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 you'll never make it to the majors. And they both made it to the majors. And they're both um, in this pitchers. doctor in baseball investigation. So, yes. Yes, because it just doesn't make sense. How, how do you throw 100 every year as a starter and rack up those innings and are you that successful? There's no, there's no more uh, uh, Nolan Ryan's out here that pitch with a bloody nose, you know. There's something going on, and MLB is, de you know, devoted to find out to go quote unquote to the last point to see what the hell's going on, because something's going on between those two pitchers. Mark my words, you're ready here. They're not doing baseball. They're doing something. They're not using pine tar like the other pitchers are doing, but they're doing something to get that RPM up every year, every year, True. every year, bro. Every year the RPM is even higher. And RPM means more, what's it called? More revolutions per, per minute. Revolutions per minute. The faster the, the ball spins, the higher the speed will be. Anyways, anyways, now moving on to the other hemisphere of the world, the Dominican Republic, the Caribbean. We're talking this episode about MLB on the move. Well, it was on the move 
uh, January 15th, International Signing Day, right? And three notable Dominican prospects got the bag, bro. They got mula, they got chicken, their life just changed. Correct. Uh, we got the opportunity and the privilege and the glory to have interviewed one of them before he got signed, Manuel Beltre. We'll start with him. Manuel, Manuel Beltre, one of the top international prospects of the world, got 2020. signed. 2020, right? Class. Class 2020. Because you got announced there were two classes um, in one. Because they're not having a July 2nd. Um, Correct. This is just consider the, the July 2nd. This is the July 2nd for both. So they did 2020 and 2021. So he was the top in his class 2020. Um, he went to the Blue Jays, I think. Blue Jays signed the 16-year-old turning 17 very soon for $2.6 million. They gave the kid the bag. And all I want to do is clap off. You know, wish him the best. Darryl, you got to speak to him. You saw how humble he was. Darryl Love Podcast was here. This is my compañero Darryl. Este, bienvenido a Barrel Love Podcast. Gracias por... Barrel Love Podcast was here. What kind of prospects, what kind of prospect do the Blue Jays get? A future shortstop for them, brother. Absolutely. Um, hopefully he can play next year. Yeah. Doubt it. <laughs> no, no, not yet. Not yet. Nah, you got Bichette. Um, yeah, but I mean, Blue Jays are known for drafting very well, signing very, very talented prospects. Um, maybe we'll see him in the future, maybe five years or less, hopefully, if he develops well. 17 is pretty young. Yeah, you can um, see him in three years. Yeah, if, three years. If he plays if, up. If he's one of those type of players that, you know, comes into the league like a Juan Soto or correct, correct, Rafael correct. Devers. Let's see what pans out in his young career. Props to you, brother. Keep working hard. Your career has just started. Moving on, we are going to talk about the Chicago Cubs. They went and gave the bag out as well. They were raving about this kid for the whole 2020 year that just passed. Um, Christian Hernandez. Christian Hernandez, another top prospect, I think rated number three prospect in, in all of baseball as signing international prospects, right? And he got $3 million from the Chicago Cubs. Props to him. A kid, you know, his dream came true. Competition with Manuel Beltre for the best shortstops in uh, Dominican Republic. The guys, you know, the, the Cubs get a very well-rounded player. In my opinion, my favorite out of these three. I've been raving about him. Never got the chance to interview him. Never know if we do. So, hint, hint, hint. Uh, they get the best bat, in my opinion, of this signing class. The kid has projection to be another A-Rock. Another era to stay at short, you know, and props to him. Now, he got $3 million, right? $3 million. So we're going up from 2.6 to 3 million, right? 16 years old, getting all this money. A lot of money, right? A lot of upside. But it doesn't stop there. Armando Cruz, Armando Cruz, another top shortstop. These are the, all shortstops. The best. So I, they say. I, I say he is the best. Considering the fact that Three, uh, this is the third shortstop that I'm going to name. Armando Cruz gets most of the most of the money out of these three. Out of Manuel Beltre and Christian Hernandez, Armando Cruz goes to the Washington Nationals. $3.9 million. La funda yunchima. This guy just got $3.9 million. And in my opinion, in my analysis, the least built to play the shortstop position Going forward, in my opinion, is Armando Cruz. Not in the scouts' opinion. They gave this kid $3.9 million. They have projections from here to uh, starting over Trey Turner type of projections for this kid. Yes. Armando Cruz. You were raving about him. You've been raving about him, Armando Cruz ever since we started talking about him. Huge upside. Um, worth the money. Worth the side. $3.9 million? $3.9 million. Um, it's a huge investment that the Nationals make in this kid. But they see the upside, they, and they know no, they, he's gonna sell tickets. Mm -hmm. um, has a great personality. Personality. Um, the kid has hunger. He has fight in him. You can see uh, there was a competition with these three guys because they was. grew up in the same. Pretty they much, the they came out, They played same tournaments. Pretty much played on the same team, same travel ball back in DR. Um, the kid is uh, like you said, a future future uh, all star, in my opinion. Uh, Huge upside. He's, upside. he's very developed. His mm -hmm. body, his hands is, are, are his hands are phenomenal. Correct. Quick on um, bad speed, good arm, 
Um, he has it all, all the tools. Out of all those three players, he's a five-tool player. Not that he's that he has all five, but out of all he's five, he's projected to be the yes, the, 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 the okay. best, the best out of it. Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Carol. Your take. Who was your favorite out of these three? Like that you saw or briefly got to get to know their skills and what projected to be that happened. Well, obviously, Manuel is my boy. Yes. Yeah, this is good to Manuel. This is great to Manuel. 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 Number number three. I believe he's got some money in this list. Good second baseman. Manuel Batray? Yeah. Shortstop, I don't I think I'm seeing him moving over as a second baseman. He's like a Luis Castillo, I, I feel like. Whoa. Luis Castillo. No, I think Manuel Batray will stay at shortstop. And you I think, think so? yeah, bro, because his hands are sick. And the most prominent part of his tool set is his bat. And nowadays, as you can see, every shortstop, every Big name shortstop is giving thirty plus home runs. He's gonna build. Yeah, up but I don't see. Him. I mean, he, I don't see him being a Carlos Correa or Lindor. But hey, I mean, he'll never know. Carlos Correa. We never know. Carlos Correa. We never know. Let's just see what happens, man. Keeping it in the Caribbean, right? The Islas Cibaeñas, my team. Las Águilas se hacen campeones, las Águilas, the Águilas. Díganse lo escrito, yo soy Aguilucho, de chiquitico. Yo soy Aguilucho, de chiquitico. Las Águilas, you know, they just were a crown champion in the Lead Dome, Liga Profesional, the Professional League of the Baseball in the Dominican Republic. Uh, and this one was a touchy one, you know. Very, very sensitive topic as, you know, just a year ago, I lost my brother, Rodney Polonia. Um, this was dedicated to him. This whole tournament was dedicated to him. The whole organization had a chip on their shoulder. And it was a very beautiful moment to see Luisito Polonia and Luis Polonia, the left, the ones left out of the Polonia family, the males uh, in that small family that were crying tears of joy, knowing that the spirit of Rodney was overseeing the triumph that the uh, Aguilas had. They came out and they won. This was dedicated, as Luis Polonia himself said, this was dedicated to you, my son. And I know you're watching us right now, brother. Thank you for everything that you've done in this world and all the joy that you left. This one was for you, brother. Aguilas and Mayan's champion. They're on the verge of going to the Caribbean series. We will be documenting that. Yes. Okay, they're going to go to Mexico, but... Okay, this guy is a Mexican on the low anyway. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, for, for a reason. He knows stuff we he, don't know. Nah, he, why, why are you saying this? You have a scout nah, in Puerto Rico? Nah, I'm actually about a... They got a squad. They they got squad. squad. Robinson Cano. Juan Lagares, MVP. Wow. They came back. They was down 3-1. to one. Um, They came back in dramatic fashion. Multiple games. Uh, game six, they almost lost. Came back, tied the game. Then one of the extras. Um, um, it was a good... Good series. A lot of the a lot of major league players played this this past tournament, mm -hmm. which is what made it better. And I hope that, with that being said, that next year we get more major league players because the competition level was pretty much it was like an extension of the major league baseball season. So maybe next year we get more um, major, major league stars. players. What do you see on the guard? He's a free agent. He is a free agent. Wow. Shoot, Juan Lagares. Damn. I see him in the American League. I see him in the American League because he's gonna get a lot of playing time as a like a Detroit. Detroit, you? Yeah, uh, a team like Detroit or even Kansas Where he City. Can play a Kansas lot. Kansas City's gonna play a lot in a team like Kansas City. He still has major league talent, you know. I see him in Japan. Even in Japan, to be honest, even okay. in Japan, very, very good analysis. So that's wrapping up the story about what's going on in Dominican Republic, and now, shamefully enough, to end. To end the show, we have to... God damn it, Rick. <laughs> the freaking Mets, they don't cease to disappoint you with scandalous, controversial news year in and year out. Yay, we got a new owner. Yay. Yo, we got a new door. You know, we're doing everything great. Yo, but we can't keep our thoughts in our pants, right? Because the... Literally, literally laugh, bro, laugh. Because the new GM, Jared Porter... Former, Just, former GM. The new former GM. The fired. former new GM. Whatever you want to call it. The new former the new, GM. The new face of the of the Mets was for for a hot three seconds. 
Jared Porter got caught sexting. That's why he got kicked up for being I'll take hot. your girl, <laughs> to not say the least. For being, I'll take your it. For being hot. For for texting some some girl there, right? Nude or whatever. There was there was sexting. Sexting. You know. Well, he was he was the one. I don't think she was reciprocating. She came out. She came out and, and filed a report or whatever. Daryl, break it down, brother. I mean, so the story is that. Jared Porter. Jared yeah, Porter. Bro. You got a job with the mess and you can just throw it down the drain like that. Jared Porter, bro. Unsolicited, unsolicited um, text to a female reporter. Oh, shit. Female reporter. Female reporter. Oh, no. Over thousands of messages that she didn't reply to. So my man's was still getting at that while. Oh, she's a freaky dome. She's a thirst. Serious. He's thirsty. He, he's. He was freaked out for that. He needs some water. Um, she came forward recently. Um, she says that, you know, obviously it's an uncomfortable situation. Um, it's something that happens a lot, not only in baseball, but throughout the world. Every aspect, every sport. Yes, and every level of workplaces. Of, yeah, every level of workplaces. Um, it's just another, another, uh, what would you, would you say, victim? Yeah. Shedding light on these creeps. Yes, <laughs> creeps, literally. Creeps. Um, good for her. I'm glad that she did it. Yes. Um, get that guy out of here. The Mets, man. The Mets. I'm still on the Mets. It's I just call, unfortunate. I call, I call that's, it the Mets curse. That's, 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 yeah, that's, you say the Mets. Out of Beltran. And, and it was because like, you're walking down, years ago, walking down the, the, steps. the steps, gets a uh, broken foot. You have Joanna Cespedes saying, his saying in the not only that, breaks his ankle in the ranch. And then leaves. And then leaves. He gets, comes over. back, he's a home run, leaves, and says he, it's COVID reason. Then you see him hugging kids. At a, you know, a mall. So, like, he says Mets. I say that um, it's also the Mets fault. Bro, I was saying Cano. Because, well, you don't really know the, 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 you don't really know the. It's a lot of L's. It's a lot of L's, but listen. Yo. I feel like all the L's that we've been taking, they got to stop sometime, right? Yeah, like. Yeah, they got to stop sometime. The Cleveland Browns made the playoffs. I'm just saying. Listen to this. Stuff has to. Stuff listen, has to change. Listen to this, man. Bernie Madoff scammed the whole teams that were part of the Will Ponds for us. Yeah. Hey, you. Yeah, you. We're leaving, bro. We're out of we're here. We're out of here. Welcome to the new year. Like we said earlier. Thank Bernie you guys. is gone. Also, like we're done. We can't handle this mess. No, the so mess. Much drama. The mess, bro. The mess. Anyway. Uh. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, Barrel Up Podcast. Follow us on Instagram, Barrel Up underscore Baseball. Follow us on Twitter, Barrel Up Podcast slash Baseball. Like this video. Comment down below. You see this bar right here that's a subscribe button? Yeah. Click that. And most importantly, don't forget to turn on your notification post. That bell. <laughs> Tenemos un gran contenido con un pilar de béisbol, Domingo Leiva, segunda base de las grandes ligas de Arizona Diamondback. Mi hermano, ¿cómo te sientes? Tranquilo, manito, gracias a Dios. Barrel Love Podcast was here. Este es mi compañero Daryl. Saludos, ¿cómo estás? Este, bienvenido a Barrel Love Podcast. Gracias por darnos la oportunidad de hablar de este tema que nos gusta tanto. Mi hermano Willy Adames. Que lo que, bro, de que lo que. Y una vez, bro. Todo bien, ¿y tú cómo tú estás?